I'm gonna come right out and say it. This Figma course that I'm taking is a masterpiece. Um, I'm taking the Figma Masterclass from Mitsuko, who is a UX design YouTuber, if you don't already know. And I'm not exaggerating, it is a really, really good course. And to give some context about myself, so I don't, I do not have a design background. I'm a physical therapist looking to get into the UX design industry. And uh, I just finished doing a UX bootcamp through App Academy. And while they go through the basics on how to use Figma, it's not very in depth. And so by the time I finished the bootcamp, the thing that I felt the weakest in was my ability to use Figma efficiently and just my overall UI design skills. Now there's a lot of Figma courses that I could have chose, but the reason I picked Mitsuko's course, there's really a few reasons. One, I just like his personality. He's a really upbeat, uh, just has a cool personality. Uh, number two, the production value seemed really high. Uh, number three, when looking at the course overview, it seemed to go over pretty much everything that I would want to learn when it came to using Figma efficiently. And number four, the price was reasonable, at least given what I had just spent on a UX bootcamp. So it's 197 US dollars, which to me was fair. Now I'm about 90% of my way through this course, so I can pretty much attest to the quality, which I would classify as phenomenal. And I'm gonna break this review into three parts. Mitsuko is a teacher, the course content, and the community called designership that you become a part of. So as far as Mitsuko as a teacher, I would say he's very skilled at teaching. Uh, he's very enthusiastic when he teaches, which just makes watching the material much more engaging. engaging. Uh, and he also, uh, he seems to choose his words carefully. Like he's not overly wordy when he's talking about different concepts. And so with his ability to do that, there's really not much filler at all in this course, which is great. One thing I like is he often asks the viewer how they would arrive at a solution. So he might have a screen up and he'll ask, how would you arrive at this solution? And he'll put a little pause cue for you to be able to think about how you might arrive at that solution so that for me, I just like it because I can try to figure things out on my own. And then if I can't figure it out, then th then he goes on and teaches how to do it. And he's also good at not just explaining what concepts are, but why they're useful and how they're used in the design industry. And the last thing that I like is he just calls me beautiful all the time. Hey there, beautiful designer. Hey there, beautiful designer. Hey there, beautiful designer. As far as the course content, I feel like this course covers just about everything I would want to know, including designing high fidelity screens and creating animated prototypes. And so the way that this course is set up is that you go through each module. And so each module kind of builds upon the one from the last. So in the, in the first module, you're kind of design, uh, figuring out how to make a design system. And then uh, in another module, you're working on, you're going deep in auto layout and you're figuring how to use auto layout to make buttons and input fields and things of that nature. And then you start going into components and things like that. And so you start just building upon all of these layers so that by the time that you're near the end of this course, uh, I have designed a fully responsive web page that is mobile first, so it scales depending on the screen size. And uh, it just, it's really cool that we're, we're essentially learning all these smaller steps, but they're equating to how it's being applied in the real world by designing an actual uh, responsive mobile first web page. And the thing I also like is he doesn't just go over how to use Figma, but he goes over different efficiency hacks, uh, presentation skills, and just modern UI principles. So he goes over how to set up the elements of a design system, including the typography scale, the color palette, the icon palette, the button layouts, the grid layouts. He goes over how to set up a dark mode color palette that is in line with the uh, Google material standard, um, which is great. He goes over a myriad of shortcuts that I use all the time, including um, Alt-L on Windows to collapse all the layers in the frame, which is really useful to, for organization. Uh, he goes over how each of the Figma tools correspond with their relevant CSS counterparts like Flexbox, and that just makes it to where designing elements 
um, it keeps the developer in mind when designing things um, by having that knowledge. He also goes over how to present mockups to designers and how to present them in an engaging and efficient way, as well as how to talk with developers about your design and how to write effective notes to the developers so that they know how to implement um, the designs that you share with them. The last aspect of this course is the community. So when you enroll in this course, you become a member of the designership community. And so in this community, you can connect with other students and you can ask questions. Now, a lot of times I find communities like this to be cool, but nothing extraordinary. And I would consider this to pretty much fit that same realm. The nice thing is that Mitsuko does seem to answer questions that people post, which is nice. Although I asked a question a few days ago that I still haven't gotten a response from, but you know, that's okay. I'm sure he's a busy guy. But yeah, other than asking questions and getting announce occasional announcements from Mitsuko, there's not a whole lot going on in the community, at least that I've experienced. Now, not everything is perfect about this course, and there are a few dislikes that I have, uh, but none of them are super major. So like, for example, uh, Mitsuko will sometimes say in his videos that there is a download link in the description below the video, but when I scroll past the video, there's no download link. And so none of the missing download links are anything that are absolutely essential, but one of them was like a free icon pack that had a ton of icons that you could use. And it would have been nice to have, but the download link was missing. So there's that. One other thing is that Mitsuko breaks his Figma files that we use as students into student files and solution files. So the student files are the ones that we use to actually design what he's going through in the videos. And then if we get stuck, then there's the solution files that we can refer to to figure out how to do it. But for one of the sections of the course, the prototyping, sec the prototyping section, the student files had the solutions in them. So I couldn't really follow along totally with Mitsuko because the solutions were already there. One other very minor con, I mean, I'm being super nitpicky here, is that Mitsuko's audio sometimes is not the best. He uses a good mic, but I think he turned the mic gain up too high, so occasionally his voice just clips throughout the course of the entire video. Uh, that probably will not even bother a lot of people. I just happen to be an audio nerd and music producer on the side, so uh, I just have a little bit more of a sensitive ear to those kinds of a things. It's not, it doesn't necessarily detract from the experience in any great way. Uh, it's just not the most crispy audio ever. The last con I would say is that it's sometimes hard to see the details of Mitsuko's Figma screen. And it's not because it's blurry or anything, but it's actually because I think it's because his monitor is a, such a high resolution that it makes all of the buttons and icons look small. And so on my 27 inch monitor, it looks fine but on my 15-inch uh, laptop, uh, it, it, I do occasionally have to squint a little bit um, because I'm usually working on my 27-inch laptop or 27-inch monitor and I have his video running on the 15-inch laptop. Um, again, I can still follow along with him, but I do kind of have to squint every now and again to catch um, a certain detail that he's pointing to on his screen. But yeah, overall, I would say that this course is a perfect course to do after a UX bootcamp if you feel like your Figma and UI skills aren't up to par. Uh, I'm not even totally through this course and I can, without a doubt, say that I feel a 100 times more confident at working in Figma than I did before the course. Like to think about the designs, that I did in my bootcamp prior to taking this, it is the most janky way possible I could have designed that project in my bootcamp. So learning what I've learned now in Mitsuko's masterclass, um, there's just, yeah, there, there's so much that I've learned that I can now create designs much more effectively and efficiently and in a way that is much more coherent with a developer implementing it using CSS. If you wanna learn more about this course, there is a link in the description below. It is an affiliate link, so if you want to support this channel, then that is a great way to do so. And if you want to check out my experience with the UX bootcamp that I did, Av Academy, check out this video here. 
because I go through a week by week run through of everything that I did within the boot camp. And until next time, I will see you in the next video.